Rosa Salazar, the star of Alita Battle Angel, is asking fans to buy the Blu-ray to give us a shot at an Alita sequel. Posting on Instagram, go get those digitals and Blu-rays. Today, we look at indications of how the Blu-ray is doing, as well as the movie on digital, analyze typical performance of Blu-ray and home video releases and its impact on a movie's profitability, then go through similar movies and estimate what a good number would be for Alita Battle Angel. The Doctor is in. What's up guys, Doc Ito here with an Alita update. Buckle up, this will be a big one. Before we begin, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of Doc Ito's free repairs. Check out the links below to sign the Alita sequel petition and make sure you've ordered the digital and pre-ordered the Blu-ray to support this movie in its fight for a sequel. Recently, Vanity Fair had an article looking at the best movies of 2019 so far. The first movie on their list was Alita Battle Angel, calling it a wonderment of sci-fi action epic, cruelly overlooked in the US with a muffled release, which was a shame. They call out Rosa Salazar's amazing performance. And while they didn't like everything in Alita, they thought, it was truly spectacular, especially since it's not about the same 10 superheroes that we keep seeing over and over again. They call it awfully refreshing, but, and this is where we disagree, too bad there's almost certainly will not be a sequel, despite a tantalizing final scene of what might have been had Alita been given her due. Well, as we know, Alita Army has been fighting for a sequel because we do not stand by in the presence of evil. And when Rosa Salazar posted this article on her Instagram, her next post was, I agree with Vanity Fair. She was probably agreeing that it's one of the best movies of 2019. However, she says, now go get those digitals and Blu-rays. This is a clear call to arm from Rosa Salazar, Alita herself, that we need to get digitals and Blu-rays. She knows that getting those will potentially give us a sequel. And this is not the first time Rosa Salazar has been asking us to do this. In an e earlier post on Instagram, when she was teasing her Amazon Prime series, she had a tease saying, wait till the big announcement tomorrow. And everybody thought this was about Alita 2 and started asking about the sequel. The comments here also took a turn about the Blu-ray. Someone asking, LOL, look at these Alita 2 comments. Patience, first we have to blow up those Blu-ray sales. But seriously though, is it Alita 2? Rosa saw this, first we have to blow up the Blu-ray sales, and replied, correct. Once people saw this as correct, they thought she was confirming an Alita sequel, which is clearly not the case because we did not get an Alita sequel announcement. And everyone was excited, what, that's crazy, mic drop, this just made my day. But then she clarified, correct, regarding the Blu-ray sales. Guys, I think she might be talking about the Blu-ray sales, not about the sequel. We know that the announcement was not about an Alita sequel, and these comments are now deleted. But this is clearly the second time Rosa Salazar, Alita herself, is asking for us to get the Blu-ray sales up because they know that we gotta get those sales up to get a sequel. So there's no other insider other than maybe James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez that will know exactly the ins and outs of how the sequel could potentially happen. So with Rosa giving us clear marching orders, as it would be, we know we got to get these numbers up. So let's try to take a look at how things are going so far. All indications are they're going pretty well. On Amazon, it's the number four and the number five Blu-ray, and it's pretty much been in the top 10 ever since, even with other movies being released and getting sales. It's been consistently up there. On Blu-ray.com, top pre-orders, it's the number two and the number three pre-order. Shazam and Alita are the only ones essentially up there, which is pretty good. Again, it's been consistently one of the top pre-orders. As a bestseller, it's number three and number four at Blu-ray.com. Again, for a movie that isn't even out, for it to be in a top Blu-ray bestseller is pretty good. Again, Shazam is also up there. Another great movie. And with the release of the digital, Alita has jumped up. So on iTunes, it's number one. It's the number one iTunes ordered digital movie. On Google Play, it's the number two movie, uh, but Captain Marvel is actually only $4.99 because it's a rental. So once Alita, if it was a rental at $4.99, it would probably be number one as well. So overall, I think it's doing actually pretty well. And we'll run the numbers in a little bit, what we can actually expect profit-wise from the Blu-ray. On IMDb, they have a list of how popular movies are, and Alita's jumped up to number 12. So if you look at a list of the most popular movies right now, we have Spider-Man, Midsummer, Toy Story, and so forth, movies that are actually in theaters. Here's Endgame, Lion King, and then number 12 is Alita Battle Angel. 
so it's actually jumped up quite a bit. And we know there's an article on Independent, which I don't want to talk about much, but essentially it was saying Alita fell out of the cultural relevancy, but that's not true at all. I mean, the movie isn't even out on Blu-ray yet, and it's already up to number 12 most popular movie. And this is about how many people are clicking on the webpage for Alita itself. And I think a lot of people are doing that because they're getting the movie on digital. They're seeing the movie on airplanes when it's a available now and they want to read more about it and this is how Alita Army is going to grow and this is how more and more people are going to see the movie and once they do they're going to want to own it on Blu-ray. There's a ton of people on Twitter who say man I wish I would have caught this movie in theaters because this is amazing. When is the sequel coming? And hopefully the sequel announcement is going to come soon but we have to get those Blu-rays first and here's Alita Battle Angel on Twitter again using the hashtag Alita Army. This is the second time they've done it. So more validation for us, for Alita Army, for the support we're giving her on Twitter and everything else. And it's great to see this even with those attacks from the Independent where they were trying to define Alita Army as something completely different. Now in that article, they talk about people who were possibly not as friendly to Kylie Harrington, who was a journalist looking for a way to cover Alita Army. And Kylie actually tweeted to Independent that they should have checked with her first because that so-called journalist never actually talked to Kylie about her experiences with Alita Army, which actually, if you keep reading her tweets ever since, have been fairly positive. And even that individual who was cited by the Independent, there was really no attack on Kylie. And they are friends on Twitter, they follow each other, and it's a, been a very collegial thing. So it was a total misrepresentation. But anyways, now there's a Yahoo article from Kylie talking about our efforts in trying to get an Alita sequel. So feel free to check that out. And in that article, they talk about the amount of money needed with possibly needing four to five hundred million to break even, which might be difficult for it to do, having made 405 million right now, theatrically. But I think we'll get there and I'll show you why. Using this article by Stephen Follows, where he did a very big in-depth look at how movies make money. And I'm going to look at this average income for a $100 million Hollywood movie blockbuster. So on average, and remember Lita was $170 million, they get about $70 million or so from the domestic theaters and about $100 million international. Alita was around $86 million domestic and three hundred nineteen international. Now, on average, and this is what I'm interested in, is the domestic home entertainment. They saw about a $77 million domestic home entertainment, meaning Blu-ray, digital, DVD. Now, this article is a few years old, and things are changing, and I'll go through that. The movie also makes some money from international home entertainment, and then uh, pay-per-view type things, TV, merchandising, and international as well. I think this merchandising at 11 million is going to be a lot higher for us. As we've seen, merchandises sell out with the art book, steel book, and everything, all the other Alita-related things. So I think merchandising is going to be a little higher for Alita for sure, which is encouraging. But the movie that is most often compared to Alita was Pacific Rim from 2013. It made a little more domestic at 100 million, a little less international at 309 but overall was a very similar amount to Alita at 411 million with a similar budget. Now the movie had a very passionate following afterward, became a little bit of a cult classic, and got a sequel. So how did it do in the home entertainment DVD Blu-rays? Well, it made about 60 million. And again, this is in the US. So people are saying, well, Alita's hopefully gonna make around $60 million, which would be good in my opinion. However, things have really changed from 2013 to now, so let's take a look at that and see exactly how much Alita is going to need. But before we do that, let's talk about Pacific Rim 2, because this movie only made $60 million at domestic, $230 international for $290 overall. So even though it got greenlit for a sequel, this was really a disappointment. It only made $17 million in Blu-ray DVD sales. But the real issue here was the movie wasn't that good. While Pacific Rim was a 6.9 on IMDb, Uprising was only a 5.6. And I'm confident Alita, Fallen Angel, and sequels and trilogy movies coming out after are going to be excellent because Robert Rodriguez and James Cameron are not going to give up their attention to detail that they've put through so far. So I would say it's not fair to use this movie as an argument against greenlighting an Alita sequel because we are not going to have a 5.6 Alita sequel. This movie is going to be even better than the original because of the attention to detail, the fact that we already have story from the manga that's been written. 
So they don't have to come up with a new story. It's already there. You just have to adapt it. So the sequel is definitely going to be great. And more people are going to go see it than the first movie. And with the set already built with an actual city built for the movie that'll last up to a decade, the costs for the sequel are going to be even less making it even more likely for it to be greenlit. So let's jump to the numbers. Pacific Rim was the 28th highest grossing home entertainment video release in 2013. These numbers are just for 2013. It made more last uh, the following year too. But you see a lot of movies made over 100 million from their combined DVD and Blu-ray numbers. Looking at 2014, again, Frozen made 300 million, Hunger Games, Lego Movie, they were all about 90 to 100 million as the top sellers. Now 2015, again a couple in the 90s, one over 100. 2017, Star Wars was big at 174, but you see only a couple other movies was in the 90 million mark. 2017, now I've only got one movie about 90 million and one at 116, Moana. So the numbers seem to be dropping. Then here's 2018, Black Panther and Infinity War were the only ones above. And so far in 20. 19, Bohemian Rhapsody and Aquaman are the only ones even getting close to 50 million. So looking at DVD and Blu-ray number, numbers, they've fallen nearly in half over the last five years only, according to the MPAA report. So in 2014, $10.3 billion were spent on U.S. physical media, and now it's only $5.8 billion in 2018. And 2013 was probably even higher than 2014. So I don't think we can really compare directly to Pacific Rim Uprising. Of course, digital sales are a lot bigger now than they were in the past. However, a lot of these digital numbers are actually online subscription video, things like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and so far we haven't heard anything whether Alita is going to be on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And with James Cameron's work, a lot of his movies are still not available on digital, some of the older ones. So. I would be a little surprised if it gets to Netflix, but we've talked about this in the past. We can Google Netflix request and you can actually request movies to be on Netflix. So I've done this in the past where you can suggest Alita Battle Angel to be on Netflix and it'll make money on Netflix too if 20th Century Fox and Disney and James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez decide that that is a viable way for the movie to make a profit. But with these decreases in the home entertainment value. How much money can we actually expect Alita to make? Because a comparison to Pacific Rim isn't fair since it's six years ago. So let's go to last year and find movies that made around 400 million overall and see how many Blu-ray home entertainment sales did they get over their life. So Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse made 375 overall and it made 37 million domestically from Blu-ray DVD sales. Solo A Star Wars Story made a little higher at 57 million. Now, I think a lot of people didn't see Solo in theaters, but did still want to see it at home. And with it being a Star Wars movie, it's always a great gift. So I think this is going to be a little bit inflated. So 57 million is, I would say, overperforming for a $400 million movie. And if Alita gets around this number, I think those would be good numbers. Rampage, 430 million, only made 30 million in Blu-ray and DVD sales. A Star is Born, 430 million overall. 33 million in Blu-ray DVD sales. So now we're a lot higher than Alita's numbers. We're about 30 million higher. Here's another movie, Bumblebee. Only made 26 million in home entertainment market. DVD Blu-rays were not that strong, even for a $465 million movie. Ralph Breaks the Internet, 32 million. Now we're 100 million gross over Alita. Here's another one, Dr. Seuss. Only 25 million in sales. Hotel Transylvania, 38 million. Ready Player One. I loved Ready Player One. It made almost 600 million at the box office, but only 30 million in Blu-ray sales. Ant-Man, 46 million, but this is a, already a $600 million movie, and it's a Marvel MCU type, so we know that's going to be a little bit higher. Fantastic Beasts, $650 million movie, 41 million home entertainment, and Deadpool 2, 63 million, but almost 800 million at the box office. So I think anything close to 50 million is going to be a good number for Alita. And if you look at last year, something around 50 million would put it right around the top 10 grossing Blu-ray movies. So I would hope we can definitely be in the top 10. I think top 5 would be amazing. If the movie gets anywhere close to 70, 80, 100 million domestically in the home entertainment market, I think that pretty much guarantees a sequel. And it'll be very interesting to see how much it makes that first week. Because something like How to Train Your Dragon sold about a half million units in the first week, making $13 million, made about $8 million the following week, and about $3 million the following week. 
So currently it's sitting at around 25 million. If we can get to this 1 million to 1.5 million Blu-ray sold within that first month or two, I think that would be very important. So make sure to pre-order the Blu-ray below if you haven't. And of course, we're going to keep you guys updated on the numbers as they come in once the Blu-ray actually comes out. But for now, go get those digitals, go get those Blu-rays, listen to Rosa Salazar, and y'all have a great day. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon. Doc out.